Scott here with MaritimeGardening.com and it's two weeks before spring and we got a snowstorm. We had a snowstorm a couple days ago, we had a snowstorm yesterday, we're going to have a snowstorm today, we're going to have a snowstorm tomorrow. <laughs> That's uh, end of winter, typical end of winter uh, dynamics here in this part of the world. Uh, so anyway, uh, got an interesting thing I'm going to show you here today. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about working with uh, hoop houses and that sort of thing under these conditions. You, when it snows like this, if you, like it's, a, it's a sunny day, it's, it's sunny right now. It's going to cloud over and we're going to have a snowstorm at some point. But right now, the sun is shining. It's about 3 degrees Celsius. It's 8 o'clock in the morning on the weekend. And I want to make it, take advantage of this sun. Right? I'm trying to thaw out my soil. i got a few things planted. I want to get those things going and uh, I need heat and with these uh, hoop houses covered in snow there's no heat so uh, you gotta get a broom and get the snow off them it only takes a minute so that's a bit of a chore but I mean on a weekday you know I gotta go to work every day I gotta commute and work all day and come home and all sort of stuff if we have a good snow I'll run out in the morning and less than five minutes probably three minutes uh, I get everything broomed off, so it's not a really big deal, and it's it's rare that I have to do that, but when it happens, you just do it. So uh, I thought I'd just uh, show you that. The other thing I want to show you today is um, I've, I've got a video on how I make hoop houses, and I, I clearly think that, I strongly feel that that is the easiest, cheapest, fastest way to make a greenhouse type uh, setup that's mobile, that's portable, uh, that's cheap wiry mesh and uh, you know about a three uh, I think in the video I use one by threes but if, uh, if I were to do it again when these ones uh, wear out uh, I think I'll replace the one by three by with two by three or two by four whatever is cheaper cheaper and I can get a hold of um, just because the one by threes it's kind of flimsy and it's I mean it's just I work with what I had here on site um, but I think two by three would be better it's a little heavier a little stronger probably hold up a, a little better um, but what if you don't have a truck? And the reason this just dawned on me is that I, I sold my truck. I had a four-wheel drive, big Dodge Ram truck, a big gas guzzling monstrosity. And uh, I, when I bought that, I, I needed it for certain things, but really I'm past that stage. And uh, so I, I sold that and bought myself a tiny little car, a Kia Forte. Uh, a very cheap, inexpensive uh, car, good on gas, and all that sort of stuff. So. Um, I don't have a truck anymore, so it's not easy to transport 4x8 sheets of wire mesh. So what do you do if you're in that situation? Other than, you know, if you get a friend, <laughs> you know, you can have it delivered. If you get a friend, you can have, you know, you know, there's the old saying, if you want friends, get a pickup truck. <laughs> You'll have more friends than you know what to do with, uh, probably too many. Um, you know, that's another strategy is get a friend. But I decided, what if, uh, what if I didn't have any friends, <laughs> and what if I was going to build a uh, a, a hoop house without wire remesh. How would I go about doing that? Uh, and how could I do that cheaply and, and so on? So uh, I'm going to show you, it's going to be a kind of a neat reveal because it's covered in snow right now. I'm going to show you what I came up with and I'm not saying this is the best solution. It's just I had a bundle of one by three strap and I had a couple two by threes. That's basically the cheapest building materials I could uh, source out and, and and some decking screws and I think some drywall screws as well but anyway just some you know basically the cheapest wood but that's the sort of thing and I, I brought this all home in my Kia Forte which is a small car it's a small sedan it's not a it's not a compact car but I maybe a, uh, anyway it's a small car but there's enough room if you put the seats down to get the you know eight foot long boards in the trunk and you know they're sort of sticking into your front windshield sort of thing but it's doable so I'll show you uh, what that looked like and how that sort of came together I didn't film a video of making it because it took four hours <laughs> to make because <laughs> I was figuring it out if I was to make another one it'd be a lot quicker I'll probably slap it together in, in an hour or so I guess because uh, all the figuring's done anyway have a look have a watch here
All right, so now we're outside my garden enclosure. There's a bit of wind here, so uh, sorry about that. We've always got wind. If the sun's up, there's wind most of the time. So uh, here's the cold frame or the hoop house I made without wire remesh. Let me just dust it off and give you a better look at it. I thought I'd take this in a handheld mode to sort of show how this went together. So you can see on the bottom, I created like a a square. That's about one foot high by 40 inches wide. I can't remember the exact dimensions. I mean, I, I designed it to fit these boxes that are outside the enclosure, their particular dimensions, and they're not all the same. I find as you go up the hill, uh, they get narrower. <laughs> This one's 40 inches wide, and that one's like 41 inches wide. That one's 42 inches wide, and the one on the bottom is 45 inches wide. <laughs> so that's what happens when you eyeball things, but I don't care, it's no big deal. So this one is the diameter of the most narrow one, so it'll fit all of them um, and close enough, right? So you create two wooden boxes like that with the two by three. One for this end, right? And one for the far end. Then, you attach these to the wooden box. So then it gets this sort of rectangular shape, right? Once, once those two side pieces are attached, right? So you attach those two side pieces, and you attach, uh, you know, these two side pieces, right? Then the thing's got dimensionality, right? Then it's a box. And then what you do is you put a, a board. I think I always used a board that was about eight inches high, right in the middle. You, you, you put it on its side and you run it across, right? And that gives you something to bend these pieces of uh, spruce over, right? You bend it over the board. I think I've got a couple pictures of that I can share. Right, so you, you, you screw this on here, then you bend this one down very carefully, and you screw that one down. Then you put a bunch of screws in. You have to pre-drill all these, or they'll crack. So you do have to pre-drill the holes where you're attaching, because you're, you're attaching them very close to the ends, right? So you're running the risk of, uh, uh, you know, you're running the risk of splitting. So all of these are pre-drilled, and these are just drywall screws. Again, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. And uh, probably be better if I added some lathe on to this to hold the plastic down. But anyway, we had uh, an incredible, uh, basically like a snow hurricane the last couple days. And uh, this was outside for all of that. And it's still intact, so I know it's good for this season anyway. Uh, you know, as seasons go on, it, it'll break down, but you just fix it with tape and just keep her going. Anyway, so you just work your way across and attach all those on. And then you uh, stretch your plastic over it. I mean if it's eight inches, eight feet long, this one the dimension is eight feet long, uh, a roll of uh, six mil poly is designed to be eight inches wide. So then you just have to cut it to length to fit from this side to this side on the highest point, if you follow my reasoning. So uh, it makes it, it's a lot easier if you just make everything eight feet long. That's why the hoop houses in my garden over there, even though the beds all those uh, square frame beds are 10 feet long. All the hoop houses are eight feet long. So I'm just working with the dimensions of the lumber and the dimensions of the plastic. It's just a lot easier that way. And I don't care if it's a bit short, not a big deal. It's easy, very easy to work around. You know, and as an economist would say, you know, they're just, the marginal returns aren't such that it's worth the time or the effort to build them exactly to specification. And actually by having them not be the full size of the bed, it gives you options. Um, anyway, these are the full sides of the beds. The beds are eight feet long and, and the wood's eight feet long and the plastic's eight feet wide, so it all worked out fine. So we'll see how that works out and what kind of heat that does and, and so on. It's got a good height. It's actually higher. So the hoop houses are very low at the side, right? Because they come down to the edge. Whereas these uh, are at least, you have a minimum height, 
right at the bottom left hand corner here of uh, a foot high at the at the edge here so you can get a lot of growing done so it's sort of ideal for uh, direct seeding your heat loving plants right because they can grow for a long time here where it's super warm while the you know while the environment around you reluctantly warms up because this part of the world uh, even though it's zone 6a it warms up very reluctantly here you know, the spring is dragged in very slowly because of that cooling effect of the the coast uh, the whole province isn't like that but certainly where I am is like that well I got a couple of minutes of battery here left so I thought I'd show something interesting my garden has two gates that control entry there's a gate here and there's a gate over there by the entrance and uh, I usually leave them shut but in the dead of winter, there was a period of time where I have to say I just left them open. I didn't think, what would anything be going to my garden for? Everything's frozen solid. And I came out one day and noticed this. This is a blackberry bush. And this will be its third year. And this is the year I expected it to really produce. And uh, I think a rabbit, I'm going to guess it's a rabbit, something short. Not a deer, because a deer doesn't need to do this. A rabbit came out here, and you can sort of see by the way this is... Uh, chewed down Almost looks like a beaver went at it. And you can see the little bites So a rabbit and cut this branch off Expecting The big branch to fall down so he could get it all the buds. That's what it wants is the buds Right all those buds that were going to give me beautiful blackberries this year Anyway cut that off and of course it didn't fall down because I have it tied on So then what did it do? It bit this one off and then it bit this one off Right. <laughs> uh, so uh, greatly reduced the yield. <laughs> it was probably out here for five minutes and did that. I bit that one off too down there. Uh, anyway, it's probably out here five minutes and uh, it reduced the yield from this bush by 50% <laughs> in five minutes. And it, and it and the rabbit didn't even get a meal out of it. I did. I couldn't even be a benefit to that rabbit. The whole thing was a disaster. And that's what I get for leaving my gate open for a couple days this winter. Um, so keep your gate closed if you're gardening in the wilderness. <laughs> because the wild animals will come in and they're, you know, whatever you're growing in your garden is better than what they've got access to. They're going to like that more. Keep your gate closed. Anyway, so that's the general idea. Uh, I'll have to see how this holds up and you know, maybe these seams should have been taped with uh, Tyvek or something like that. I'm, I'm sure there's better, a thousand better ways to do it, but that's just how I figured it out on the fly. I didn't have any blueprints or anything like that. I was just trying to tinker around and see what I could figure out. Um, so uh, I'll have this here. Um, I'm going to plant, uh, once the soil thaws a bit, I'm going to plant onions here. And once they're up, I'm going to move this over one. Not here, this is where garlic are. but. And I'm going to direct seed uh, tomatoes or peppers or something like that underneath this outside the garden enclosure because I find uh, the wild animals don't seem to care about tomatoes. The odd bird might peck a hole in them once in a while, but the deer, the rabbits, porcupines leave tomatoes alone, my experience. So I can grow them outside here and that frees up space in the garden for leafy greens and other things that those animals seem to like. Anyway, I hope this was uh, useful. I hope this gave you some ideas. If you're, if you can't source out wire remesh to make hoop houses, you can still uh, slap something together, and you can still get that sort of dome thing going, just with a little bit of cleverness. And I'm sure there's better ways. I'm sure going to get lots of comments. You should have done this. You should have done that. And maybe if I build another one, <laughs> you know, this will probably last a few years and then fall apart. Um, I'm sure the plastic will last longer than the wood. In fact, because in this enclosure here, the wood's just sort of. Uh, moist. <laughs> Moisture and wood don't mix. Uh, maybe every one of these boards I should have treated with something, uh, a varnish or something. But, uh, I don't seem to have the patience for all those, those sorts of things. Maybe the next time around, maybe if I'm retired, <laughs> I can do all that sort of stuff. Uh, just, I just don't have a lot of time. I, I do this stuff, I got an hour here, an hour there, and, and that, this whole garden was created by me taking advantage of an hour here and an hour there. It's very rare that I have a whole day. Uh, this uh, this thing took the better part of an afternoon to throw together. I rarely get that kind of time to focus on my garden. Um, 
Well, you get the radio going, you crack, crack open a couple beers, and you just uh, get her done. Anyway, I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you uh, like this content, please uh, share, uh, subscribe, check us out on Facebook, uh, like us on Facebook, check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, and have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.